Hey, what's going on you guys? It's Matt from RC Overload here, and today we are starting up the Yeti build. Uh, as you can see, I've already got it pretty much all torn down to the chassis with just the motor and the transmission attached to it. Um, I've pretty much been stripping everything down, getting ready to just reassemble it, all with some new cool parts. Um, basically, after what I had seen with the first two videos that I had made with the Axle Yeti, this thing is fun, it's fast, it's crazy, but it also lacks some durability in some areas. Uh, I'm not going to be bashing it like I was, as you saw in the other two videos. Uh, I'm just going to make it more of an all-around, uh, great handling and running truck. You know, for anything that I might put it through, yeah, I might still jump it here and there, um, but I'm not certainly going to jump it 30 feet in the air like I was doing before. But, nonetheless, this is going to be the start of a what I'm assuming is going to be a long build. Uh, we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing in this. So, and guess what? I'm still waiting on parts to show up. <laughs> um, anyways, so the first thing I kind of wanted to go over with you guys here is on the Axel Yeti, you, there's going to be one company you guys are going to see in every single video, pretty much. And that is... Bum -ba -da -dum. Team K and K hardware kit. Yes, you see it correctly. A 338-piece hardware kit, um, all stainless steel screws, uh, nuts, washers, and so forth. Uh, the whole truck is getting redone with the hardware in it. And on the back side of this thing, uh, you guys will see exactly what it covers. Let's see. Let's read it. 338 piece stainless hardware kit. Kit includes 2 millimeters, 2.5 millimeters, 3 millimeters, and 4 millimeters hardware. All 2.6 millimeter has been replaced with 2.5 millimeter. What does that mean? Basically, any screw that is actually a 2.6 millimeter sized screw uh, is actually now going to be a 2.5. Real quick, I am using the book as a reference to what screws I need to be putting in. Because as you see, I have it all torn apart. So what's really cool about this book is you have diagrams, okay? You got the diagrams in the book, and it shows you all the different screws, and it gives you part numbers for every single screw throughout here. You then come over to here, <coughs> excuse me, and you can see, I can show you guys, you can see a little bit that there's all the different screws and they all have part numbers and they also have screw sizes. So that's pretty cool because the Team K K hardware kit, which I've already sorted out into two bins, I'll show you guys. This is all the hardware, okay? They all come with labels. You guys can see the little white tabs that are in here are all labeled with the size of the screw. So all you gotta do is find the screw in the book, get the part number, reference it to its size in the book, and then match it up with this. Or you can just take one screw out and replace it with that correct same size screw. But I have this thing completely torn apart and that's how I'm gonna do it. But also, it does say not included are the four three millimeter button head shaft screws or the two 2.6 by 18 millimeter bell crank screws. So there are a couple screws that aren't in the kit that you're gonna have to reuse. Uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure exactly which ones those are, because I haven't really looked them up. But as we get to it, I'll figure it out and let you guys know. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm fighting a little cold here. So we're going to start off today um, with actually reassembling the front diff and putting on a new front shock tower, um, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. We're going to get up closer, but there's something I wanted to show you guys with the diff that I think you guys might actually find interesting. All right, so let's, uh, let's get a little closer. All right, you guys, so as you can see, we have the chassis, and if you take a little closer look here, real quick, you can see all the silver shiny screws that are on here, including these two mounting screws for the motor. That is all the Team K&K &K hardware kit. 
okay? And literally, it does replace every screw on here. So, I was doing that ahead of time, just to save myself some time, get ahead of things, and just start replacing parts. Um, but what I'm going to show you guys now is installing the front diff. And this is something you guys actually might want to take a look at. The reason why I'm saying this, let me move this out of the way. I want you guys to see this. Okay? These are your differential gears. If you take a close enough look at this one, you can see it's got a lot of grime built up inside of it. And the teeth look a little rounded. Just a little bit. But now take a look at the pinion gear. Oops, sorry. Look at that. Look at how worn down that gear is. Now for some of you that don't know what this gear actually looks like new, I'll show you. Here we have a new pinion gear versus an old pinion gear. Look at the teeth on that. Look at how much more grab and bite there is in the pinion gear. This is something I was actually very, very surprised to see, considering I've only run this truck twice. Two full run batteries on 3S LiPo. So this might be something you guys want to take a look at. Also went ahead and just replaced it on the differential itself. Uh, replaced the fluid inside with a hundred, uh, yeah, hundred, uh, yeah, 100,000 weight diff fluid inside of this because I want it a little bit more tougher. Um, make it a little bit more of a grab with the wheels when it's going over different terrains. But I still want it open to have that control when turning. So yeah, I was very surprised to see that. So you guys can see that a little better. It's quite incredible how much that this thing had worn down already. Well, anyways, so we replace that. Now, <coughs> oh, geez, excuse me. The other thing I wanted to show you guys that we're doing on this is replacing the front shock tower. Now, as you guys see, here is the front differential. And yes, you are seeing correctly. That is a carbon fiber front shock tower made by Extreme Racing. Extreme Racing has made two carbon fiber products so far uh, for the Axle Yeti. One including the front shock tower here that I have mounted up on the front differential. Um, as well as they have made a roof panel for the uh, Axle Yeti. But I chose not to get the roof panel because I just didn't want to scratch it up that much because I absolutely love carbon fiber. But you guys can see it is really thick. Um, it is just about the exact same size as the stock one uh, for thickness. It is really strong. I'm not concerned about breaking it. And it is lighter than the plastic. So that is one benefit. It's lighter, but it's stronger at the same time. I did run into a small problem, though. When installing the four screws here that hold it on to the differential, the holes on the carbon fiber shock tower were not lined up 100%. I actually had to file down the holes that the screws go into to make it a little bit wider so the screws could actually go in smoothly. So, put this off to the side for a minute, and we're just going to do a quick little install on the differential. Uh, as you guys can see, I do have some whoop, marine grease that I'm going to be putting on here onto the teeth to help um, improve basically protecting it from rust uh, in case water does come in but also to add in protection with the gears uh, smooth out the gears quiet the gears a little bit that's pretty much all I'm doing with it and we're just gonna reassemble it I'm just applying a little bit because I'm gonna put a, uh, a bit more on the main gear itself and it'll grab from that as well so this is pretty simple um, a little interesting fact, when you guys remove these four screws that hold the main gear on, there's actually a paper seal that's right inside of here. Do not rip it, do not tear it, otherwise you will need to replace the seal. If you're gentle enough about it, 
you won't need to do that. You can just pop it off and pop it back on. Um, I had actually found that the oil that was inside of this differential already was really, really, really dirty. And again, I'm very surprised just after two runs. Um, so that's why I wanted to put in some new fluid anyways into it. So I'm just going around for those of you that have never done this before. I'm just taking some of the grease, okay, the marine grease here, and you can use any type of grease you want to use. It doesn't have to be marine grease. I just like it because it does help protect everything that's on here from rust and corrosion, um, and as well as it was the only grease I had. So we'll just go around, apply a light coat to the teeth. Uh, you don't want it too thick, otherwise it can actually cause a little bit of a binding issue. So I'm just taking the brush and I'm going along. I'll just go around the whole thing. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because it will spread as the teeth uh, interlocked with each other with the pinion. So there we go. Now I'm also going to add a little bit of grease to the bearings that are on both sides, uh, as well as the bolts in the back side of this. Again, it protects it from corrosion. All right, you guys, so there we go. We've got the front differential in. And now we're just going to put the outer cover on, which is simply just held on by two screws. And it just pops in over it, okay? And we're going to put two new screws right in there. Now my electric gun is still charging at the moment, so I kind of have to resort to doing it by hand. Which is fine. I don't mind doing it. It does get a little boring for you guys. So I'm not tighten, uh, tightening the whole thing completely yet. I'm just getting the screws, uh, you know, snug pretty much all the way down because I want this to sit evenly. And that one's tight. Cool. So there we go. Front differential has been reassembled with the new carbon fiber front shock tower from Extreme Racing. And one thing I wanted to mention is it does have the exact holes as the stock one. Um, so there really is no change there. You don't have to worry about anything. So now we're just going to pop it right onto the truck and call it a wrap for today. <laughs>